Steel is a particularly important material in mechanical engineering. Steels are relatively inexpensive compared to other metals and are characterized by good toughness and high strength. In principle, steels are binary alloys consisting of the base element iron and the alloying element carbon. The maximum carbon content is 2%. The carbon gives the steel its strength and hardness, as iron alone would be too soft to be used as a construction material. Pure iron is therefore known as soft iron. So note, steels are made up of the main element iron, with a maximum of 2% carbon added. Depending on the carbon content, steels have different properties such as hardness, strength or toughness. To understand this, we need a deeper understanding of the microstructure of steels and how it is formed. But before we turn to the iron-carbon alloy system, let us first look at the solidification of pure iron. The cooling curve of soft iron shows several sections where the temperature remains constant, within each of which different processes take place in the microstructure. In the following, we look at a simplified cooling curve of pure iron, showing only the microstructural changes relevant to material science. We will show the complete cooling curve later and go into more detail on this. When the iron is cooled from the liquid melt, the first thermal arrest occurs at the solidification temperature of 1536 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, after complete solidification, the iron is in the face-centered cubic lattice structure. In this state the iron is also known as gamma iron. If the completely solidified gamma iron is cooled further, a lattice transformation takes place at 911 degrees Celsius due to allotropy. The face-centered cubic iron is transformed into a body-centered cubic lattice structure. Below 911 degrees Celsius, the structure does not change anymore. In this body-centered cubic form, the microstructure of soft iron is also called alpha iron. The transformation of the lattice structure is therefore also called gamma-alpha transformation. Note that during the transition from the face-centered cubic to the body-centered cubic lattice structure, the shape of the individual grains changes due to diffusion processes. While the grains of gamma iron have a more polygonal shape, the grains of alpha iron have a more round shape. If small amounts of carbon are added to the iron, the phase transformations just described are shifted to different temperatures. How the carbon affects the transformations of iron is best explained by the iron-carbon phase diagram. Compared to pure iron, there are two major differences in the way steel solidifies. Firstly, the steel no longer solidifies at a constant temperature, but in a temperature range. Secondly, solidification does not start at 1536 degrees Celsius, but at a lower temperature. The solidification temperature or range is thus reduced by the carbon. In the phase diagram the liquidus line marks the start of solidification and the solidus line marks the end of solidification. In addition, the gamma-alpha transformation of the iron is influenced by the carbon. This lattice transformation no longer takes place at a thermal arrest, but over a temperature range. The onset of the gamma-alpha transformation is shifted to lower temperatures by the carbon. Nevertheless, an additional thermal arrest is observed at the end of the gamma-alpha transformation. We will later explain in detail what this is exactly due to. From a carbon content of about 0.02%, the lattice transformation from gamma to alpha iron always ends at 723 degrees Celsius at a thermal arrest. From a carbon content of 0.8%, the start of the gamma-alpha transformation is even lower to such an extent that it again coincides with the end of the lattice transformation. This means that from a carbon concentration of 0.8%, the gamma-alpha transformation occurs at constant temperature. At higher carbon concentrations, the cooling curve shows a region with a lower cooling rate. Additional microstructural changes occur in this region. This is due to the limited solubility of carbon in the face-centered cubic lattice, and when the maximum solubility is exceeded, the carbon precipitates from the gamma iron lattice. This releases energy in the form of heat. This is the reason for the slower cooling rate shown in the cooling curve. The microstructural processes that take place during this process will be discussed in more detail later. As before, the gamma-alpha transformation takes place at a constant temperature of 723 degrees Celsius. At a carbon content of 2.06%, the end of solidification at 1147 degrees Celsius coincides with the solubility limit, so in this case carbon is precipitated from the microstructure immediately after solidification. This maximum solubility of 2.06% carbon in the face-centered cubic lattice structure of gamma iron represents the maximum carbon concentration that a steel can take up. 
This is why iron materials are called steels up to this limit. Higher carbon concentrations result in a fundamentally different microstructure. For steels, the phase diagram looks like this. Let's summarize the main areas. Above the liquidus line the steel is completely molten. Solidification takes place between the liquidus and solidus line. In the area below the solidus line, marked in green, the steel is completely solidified and the iron is in the face-centered cubic lattice structure of gamma iron. The carbon is initially completely dissolved in this lattice. While below a carbon content of 0.8%, all carbon remains soluble in gamma iron. At higher concentrations, carbon becomes completely insoluble in gamma iron below a certain temperature. Therefore, below the solubility limit in the phase diagram, carbon is precipitated from the gamma iron lattice. Exactly how and in what form the carbon is precipitated will be explained later. Furthermore, the gamma alpha transformation causes carbon to precipitate because it cannot be dissolved in the body centered cubic alpha iron to the same extent as in the face centered cubic lattice structure. Below a carbon concentration of 0.8%, this lattice transformation takes place in the temperature range marked in yellow. At higher concentrations, the gamma alpha transformation takes place at a constant temperature of 723 degrees Celsius. Below this temperature, alpha iron and carbon are present in the microstructure of a steel. We will clarify later in more detail in which form the carbon is contained in the microstructure. As already explained, the relevant part of the iron carbon diagram for steels ends at a carbon content of 2.06%. In this concentration range the microstructure is characterized by high strength combined with good toughness. Higher carbon contents result in a different microstructure, which tends to be much more brittle. On the other hand, these iron materials are particularly suitable for casting due to their structural properties. These materials are therefore also referred to as cast iron. So note, iron materials with a carbon content of less than 2.06% are called steels. At higher concentrations, one speaks of cast iron. The relevant range for steels in the iron carbon phase diagram up to 2.06% carbon is also called the steel part. Let's take a closer look at the steel part of the phase diagram. This shows the lenticular two-phase region during solidification that is typical of solid solution alloys. In fact, all steels solidify like a solid solution alloy in which the alloying element carbon is initially completely soluble in the face-centered cubic lattice of gamma iron. This complete solubility is the very characteristic of a solid solution alloy. The good solubility of carbon is due to the face-centered cubic lattice structure of gamma iron. The relatively small carbon atoms find space in the centers of the face-centered cubic unit cells. These free sites are also called octahedral sites. The face-centered cubic gamma iron formed from the melt with the carbon atoms embedded in it is also referred to as austenite. Thus, the two-phase region between the liquidus and solidus line contains the phases melt and austenite. Below the solidus line, there is initially a pure solid solution structure of austenite. However, the face-centered cubic lattice of gamma iron begins to change to the body-centered cubic structure at a certain temperature. It should be noted that this gamma alpha transformation also occurs at carbon concentrations above 0.8%. Although it is not visually apparent as a region in the phase diagram because in these cases the transformation occurs at constant temperature. Unlike the face-centered lattice of gamma iron however, the unit cells of the body-centered cubic alpha lattice are already occupied by an iron atom in the center. The body-centered cubic lattice structure of alpha iron is therefore hardly able to dissolve carbon. The black line in the phase diagram marks the maximum solubility of carbon in alpha iron. Similarly, the solubility limit already explained marks the maximum solubility of carbon in gamma iron. Thus, the solubility of carbon in alpha iron is significantly lower than that in gamma iron. The maximum solubility of carbon in alpha iron is reached at 723 degrees Celsius and is only 0.02%. At room temperature, the solubility drops below 0.001%. The low solubility of carbon in alpha iron can therefore often be neglected. This alpha iron, which is almost insoluble for carbon, is also known as ferrite. Thus, while the carbon atoms are initially completely soluble in the austenite, they are virtually insoluble in the alpha iron after the gamma alpha transformation. The carbon therefore diffuses out of the face-centered cubic lattice during the lattice transformation. In principle, this can happen in two ways. With slow cooling and a relatively high carbon content, 
the carbon atoms precipitated in sufficient numbers have enough time to form their own hexagonal lattice structure. In this lattice modification, the carbon is also called graphite. In this case, the carbon precipitates in pure form. Such graphite precipitation is not only favored by relatively slow cooling rates, but can also be specifically enhanced by the addition of silicon. The precipitation of carbon in the form of graphite is also referred to as a stable system, since the carbon in this form cannot decompose any further and is therefore stable in the thermodynamic sense. A microstructure formed according to the stable system thus basically consists of iron and graphite. Cast iron has a relatively high carbon content of over 2% and is thus a typical representative of the stable system. During the gamma-alpha transformation, however, the carbon cannot be precipitated only as graphite. If the solidified microstructure is cooled more rapidly and only relatively small amounts of carbon are present, the carbon atoms can no longer combine to form a common graphite lattice. In this case, the precipitated carbon atoms combine with three iron atoms each to form iron carbide Fe3C and form a rhombohedral lattice structure. This intermediate iron carbide compound is also called cementite. As the name suggests, this compound is very hard and is largely responsible for the increase in hardness of the steel. Cementite precipitation can be achieved not only by faster cooling, but also by additives such as manganese. The precipitation of carbon in the form of cementite is also referred to as a metastable system in the thermodynamic sense, since the iron carbide compound would decompose into the thermodynamically stable graphite form by diffusion processes at sufficiently high temperatures and long annealing times. Steel, with a maximum carbon content of 2%, has a relatively low carbon content and is therefore a typical representative of the metastable system. So note, a microstructure formed according to the metastable system basically contains iron and cementite as microstructural constituents, while the microstructure of the stable system consists of iron and graphite. Steels are generally produced according to the metastable system and cast irons according to the stable system. With this understanding, the iron carbon diagram for steels can be made somewhat more precise. Both the precipitation of carbon during gamma-alpha transformation and the precipitation of carbon when the gamma solubility limit is undershot occur in the metastable system for steels in the form of cementite. Note that due to the low carbon content in the area marked in white, the carbon remains dissolved in the alpha iron and therefore no cementite is formed. Depending on whether the carbon is precipitated as graphite or cementite, the lines in the iron carbon phase diagram are slightly different. The diagram first shows the lines of the metastable iron carbon phase diagram. The deviating lines of the stable phase diagram are added in red. Note that for steels only the metastable system with its cementite precipitation is relevant. For this metastable system, the diagram ends at a carbon concentration of 6.67%, since the microstructure then consists of 100% cementite. This can be shown relatively quickly using the molar masses of iron and carbon. The molar mass of carbon is related to the molar mass of the iron carbide compound Fe3C with three iron atoms and one carbon atom. This gives a mass fraction of carbon in cementite of 6.67%. Let us now return to the cooling curve of pure iron. As explained earlier, the first thermal arrest at 1536 degrees Celsius corresponds to solidification and the thermal arrest at 911 degrees Celsius corresponds to the lattice transformation from a face-centered cubic lattice to a body-centered cubic lattice. However, the cooling curve of soft iron actually shows another thermal arrest at 1392 degrees Celsius. This is because soft iron does not solidify directly in the face-centered cubic structure of gamma iron, but in the body-centered cubic structure of so-called delta iron. Only at 1,392 degrees Celsius does the face-centered cubic gamma iron form. Strictly speaking, the delta phase also affects the iron carbon phase diagram. Additional phase regions are formed in the upper left corner of the diagram. However, it can be seen that even low carbon concentrations of about 0.1% lead to a complete suppression of the delta phase. Steel with higher carbon concentrations then crystallizes directly in the face-centered cubic lattice structure of gamma iron. However, since even low carbon steels are not used at such high temperatures that they exist in the delta phase just below the melting point, this delta phase has no technical significance anyway. The iron carbon diagram is therefore often shown in a simplified form without this phase region. In fact, the cooling curve of the soft iron even shows another thermal arrest at a temperature of 769 degrees Celsius. However, 
This is no longer due to a lattice transformation. The reason is a quantum mechanical phenomenon, which is responsible for the fact that iron is magnetic below this temperature and not above. This temperature is also known as the Curie temperature. The non-magnetic state of body-centered cubic iron above the Curie temperature is called beta iron. Below the Curie temperature, soft iron is called alpha iron. The transition from the non-magnetic to the magnetic state does not change the microstructure and therefore does not affect the phase diagram. From a material science point of view, therefore, body-centered cubic iron is always referred to as alpha iron, even above the Curie temperature. Now that we have learned about the structure of the iron-carbon diagram, we will take a closer look at the microstructural processes during the solidification and cooling of steels in the next video.